Recently, my wife and I relocated from our home on the eastern shore of Maryland, where I spent the last eight years building my woodworking business. We have moved now to the Holy Mountain, Sewanee, Tennessee, so that my wife can attend the School of Theology at the University of the South. We're here and ready for a fresh start. So, today, I'd like to show you my new woodworking shop. Welcome to the shop. My wife and I were very fortunate with this move to be able to move into a house that had a shop space. This is a one car garage, which is comparable to what I was using before the move, uh, except that this shop is actually three feet wider. The dimensions of this shop are 21 and a half feet long by 14 foot wide for a total of 301 square feet. The ceiling heights are also a bit higher in this shop at just shy of nine feet tall, which allowed me the opportunity to put my overhead storage cabinets up out of my head space and I don't have to worry about bumping my head and I have lots of room underneath for hanging things on the walls. The additional width actually has given me the opportunity to try out a new tool layout I've been really excited about. This layout puts my central hub, my most used machinery, right in the middle of the shop. So there's the table saw, the jointer, the planer, and my workbench slash assembly table. And they're right in the middle of the shop, easily accessible all the way around, and it gives me lots of space for flexibility along the walls of the shop. This allowed me to really customize the space according to my individual needs as a furniture maker. So I'm really excited to show you guys everything. Let's take a look around. We'll start in the front left corner of the shop. Right here I have my Craftsman 12 inch bandsaw. This bandsaw works fairly well, but I do have plans to upgrade to the Laguna 1412 at some point. Above the bandsaw on the wall, I have bar clamps. You can never have too many clamps in a wood shop. Over here on this side, there's my rack that stores chisels and dividers and saddle squares. Unfortunately, my chisel collection has grown to the point now that it's overflowing this rack. On the wall over here, there are jigs for the table saw. It's really, really handy to have those real close to the table saw so that I can just be efficient and get to any jig that I want really quickly. Overhead, I've got lots of cabinet storage. I can put lots of things in this and it keeps it out of my way and nice and tidy and organized. And I've even got a chair for the occasional shop visitor to sit in and be quite comfortable. So continuing along clockwise around the shop, we come to my storage shelf where I keep small tools such as my sanders and my scroll saw miscellaneous shop supplies down at the bottom, shop rags. Up here there is a shelf that houses sanding supplies and right next to that is a sandpaper organizer. Just to the right of that is one of my bar clamp racks. I have a lot of clamps and I need more. I'm always getting new clamps. Next to that is the truck of the shop. This is an antique Montgomery Ward drill press and it is rock solid and super loud but it's very accurate and reliable and served me well up to now. Just above that there's a saw till. I have a few western style saws but not many because most of my joinery is cut with Japanese pole saws but whenever I need one I like to have it close at hand so I built a saw till for my western style saws and have it put it on the wall and I have like yardsticks hanging next to a framing nailer that's out of the way. And of course up here there's lots and lots more overhead cabinet storage where I can just put anything that I don't need to have out in the shop out of the way and it just helps me keep things tidy because I love to have it tidy. Next to the drill press is the door to my kitchen and then next to that is our stackable washer and dryer. Uh, it's just my wife and I and our dogs, so we don't generate a lot of laundry. So whenever it came time to buy a washer and dryer, we went with a stacking unit because we knew that it would maximize the space that I have in the shop. Above it, I have some storage and more storage. Lots of clamp storage over here in this dead space. I like to be able to have my clamps on hand, but still out of the way when they're not needed. So I've got 
C clamps and corner clamps and hand screws and quick spring clamps right here, accessible but out of the way. Next to the washer is my old 15 inch jet planer that I intend to restore in the very near future. I currently have the DeWalt 735 in my main tool hub. The 735 is a great planer, it's 13 inches, it's a straight knife cutter head. But I like the idea of having a slightly wider planer, so this 15 inch planer will give me an advantage there. And it will also use less power because it's a 220 model and the DeWalt is not. Above the planer is pegboard. I utilize pegboard because it's a quick way to store little tools that you need often, but yet still have them out of the way when they're not needed. So I have hammers and squares and pry bars and paint can openers and you name it, I can put it up here on the wall and I easily access it really quickly if I need to. Above that is my fired saw stop cartridge that I turned into a shop clock. Now, I did not stick my finger on my saw stop. This actually happened a couple years ago when I ran my saw stop into a screw that was in a board and also contacting the table so it was grounded. So my cartridge fired and it destroyed the cartridge and the blade, but I kept it as a little memento and turned it into a clock. And it's pretty awesome. Now we come to what I consider to be the messy corner of my shop. It's where I throw a lot of things that I don't use often. I have my antique Dunlop lathe here, and my portable router table, a box fan, my air compressor. I haven't set the lathe up yet because, frankly, I don't use it very often. Usually, I'll bust out the lathe at Christmas time and make some ornaments, and then throughout the rest of the year, I don't use it at all. So, I've been playing around with the idea of actually putting the lathe down in storage and putting a CNC machine here because I know that will get utilized a whole lot more than the lathe will. That way, if I want to do any turning, I could just bring the lathe out for a weekend and set it up and do the turning and then put it away out of the shop. The lathe is a very messy tool, and I don't like turning that much, so it's just not something that I need to have in the shop frequently. Above that, though, I have one of my favorite things in the shop, my shop TV. It's really nice to be able to put on a movie or a documentary and listen to it over my... Bluetooth earbuds while I'm working in a shop or just listen to tunes or just relax. Having a TV in the shop is really great in my book. Below that there's a window that looks out into the backyard where there's a forest. Behind me is the dust collection system which we'll actually talk about a little bit later in the video. Up here on the wall is a frame I made for hand plane storage. A lot of these hand planes I use all the time so it's nice to have them within arm's reach easily accessible. There are a couple things on here that I don't use very often, like this big guy or the compass plane or the draw knife. They don't get used all that often, but they are tuned up if I need to use them or want to use them on any occasion. There's a little bit more space for a couple more hand planes I think I'd like to put on here because there are some that I'd like to access a little more often, but right now they're up in overhead cabinet space and a little difficult to get to. Below that is an old handsaw that's basically just for looks. I never really use it. And next to that is some jumbled storage for screwdrivers and such. Below that is my large trash can, which I use for wood scraps to take out in the backyard and burn in the fire pit. And there's also a smaller trash can that I use for just regular shop trash. Along this wall is my cobalt sliding compound miter saw. For as far as miter saws go, I love this one. It's very accurate. It does a good job. Like most miter saws, the dust collection on this is very inefficient. It throws dust everywhere. I do have a hose hooked up that catches maybe 40% of the dust, but the rest of it I just end up having to vacuum up. Behind me is a window with a lovely view of the side of a hill. And over here, a whiteboard, bulletin board, shop air conditioner, Frank the shop mascot, some more bar clamp storage. This is for some of my longer bar clamps. Below that, two adjustable roller stands, a shooting board and saw hook, and a 45 degree miter sled for the table saw. Now in the front left corner of the shop is more of the business end of the shop. There is a desk here. I did make this desk so that it can fold down and out of the way if I ever want it to be out of the way, but I find that it usually just stays here. It doesn't really hinder 
using the jointer or anything else, so it's nice to have a desk set up here all the time. Above the desk, I have a drill station. Chargers are mounted to the side. I can store my drills and drill bits. There is a pencil sharpener mounted to it, which is used all the time. Some tape storage on dowels, paper towels. Here's my shop power, which we'll talk about very soon. Some miscellaneous hardware storage and paper storage. There's even a task light on the desk for if I'm tracing something or just need a little extra light. And my Bose Bluetooth speaker, which is used every day. So that brings us back to the central tool hub of the shop where I have my table saw. I do have a saw stop table saw. This is the 1.75 horsepower professional cabinet style saw. I haven't found that the 1.75 horsepower is in any way underpowered for my needs. I've been happy with the saw. Like most people, I bought it for the safety features, but I fell in love with it because it's just so well made. It's an American made tool and it's reliable and I use it every day and it's my favorite thing in the whole shop. At the end of the table saw, I do have a old six inch craftsman jointer. It suits my needs just fine. If I ever have anything oversized than that to flatten, then I'll oftentimes use hand planes on one face and then it'll be ready for the planer. It doesn't really hamper me too much. I do also have this joinery bench. Coincidentally, this is an off cut from a large project that I did a couple years back with my business partner Jack at the time and we built a 14 foot long butcher block countertop with laminations of walnut and maple and the client was going to have a cutout for an industrial size grill that he had in his kitchen and so we took this cutout from that and I made it into a little joinery bench that also doubles as an assembly table for my table saw and right next to the joinery bench Located in the same cluster is my DeWalt 735 planer that I've told you about. It is a straight knife cutter head. It's very loud, but it's a very reliable machine as long as you keep sharp blades on it and keep the bed clean and the table waxed, then it, it's a pretty great planer. I do hope to upgrade it soon whenever I get the other planer restored. Moving here, my wife and I were fortunate enough that we have a house with 200 amp service of power. So that means that I was able to put my shop together exactly the way I want and have everything on its own dedicated line. So we have outlets all the way around the shop as well as a power hub and a lighting hub on the ceiling that are on their own dedicated lines. And the dust collector has its own dedicated line run up where the dust collector has been mounted to the wall. So overall I have plenty of power I never have to worry about any breakers tripping or running out of space. I'm happy with that. I am incredibly happy with my dust collection in this shop. I am running a two horsepower Harbor Freight dust collector, but I have removed the hose from the impeller to this filter that comes with the standard configuration. And instead, I've mounted the filter to the ceiling and I have it directly connected to the impeller that's mounted to the wall and I have everything running through an Oneida Super Dust Deputy which slows down all the large particles and drops them down. It is a cyclone system now, two stages. I very rarely ever have to empty this bag whenever this system is set up in this configuration. All I have to do is slide out that trash can and take it and empty the shavings and then I'm back up and running. I really only have one main run in the shop and that goes straight over these hand planes and has one drop down to the miter saw but then it goes over and goes down to the central machinery hub and it branches off and the top branch goes to the planer below that it goes to the table saw and then below that it goes to the jointer so those are the main dust producing tools in my shop I don't really need any other dust collection set up at this time if I use my bandsaw, I can hook up my shop back to that, and it tends to do a fairly good job. Now, you may have noticed the absence of one very important thing in my shop. What's that? Well, lumber. Fortunately, I have a space in the basement of my house that allows me to store all of my lumber. So I have everything down there, and I won't show it to you today because it's a jumbled mess, but it is an incredible help to not have 
lots and lots and lots of lumber in the shop all the time, cluttering me whenever I'm trying to make and produce furniture. Well, that's just about everything for the shop tour. I'm really happy to be in a bright new space, and I feel like I've got a whole lot more room in this shop, so I'm really excited to start making projects in the new shop, and I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching.